Hello everybody. Today we are looking at lawn tennis in about 1885. The game has been made popular in the late 60s and then 70s. Um, actually the first the first society in games was established not far not, not far away from here in Leamington Spa in 1872 and in 1888 we have our lawn tennis association and it still carries on today. And that was one of the pursuits that ladies started taking an active part in and they could play with men as well, just like in croquet. Um, tennis itself, the origins really go back to medieval times, but it was the first time it was, it was played on a croquet lawn, hence the name. So today we're looking at what it was made of and what all the layers are underneath and we'll see if we can have a bit of a game. Let's see what's underneath. Let us start, as always, with the undergarments. Obviously, for sport like tennis, we are looking at reducing the layers. So the old combo of a chemise and drawers can go to the drawer. And we are waiting. We are wearing a combinations, um, which you've seen before in my other videos, but they are very, very comfy for all kinds of sports. They have a little flap here for emergencies and they unbutton all the way down. Um, don't be alarmed, I'm wearing some knickers underneath just in case things happen. Don't ask me how I know it happened before. Um, but basically that would be my first layer and that's the layer that would be washed most often. It's in cotton with some nice lace and it's nicely fitted. There's no extra sort of bunching like with a chemise underneath the corset. So that's quite sporty. Right, I've got very thin and cotton stockings and a relatively new arrival rubber garters. Um, garters of that era could be quite elaborate with um, elastics and with embroidered um, fabrics. These ones are just very simple straps of elastic type with a buckle and this one is the other way around. At that time you see quite a lot of um, adverts in the fashion magazines for a silk elastic which is unfortunately nowadays not really available anywhere so I had to make do with some modern one um, and obviously because it's not a special occasion it's just um, plain elastic. Um, elastic started to be used in the beginning of the 19th century with the coils of metal used as the expanding medium um, and it's been used quite a lot in corsetry actually especially male corsetry as well but the rubber elastic really comes into sort of the 70s and starts being used um, even earlier starts to be used in shoes in the dresses occasionally and in the garters so a work woman would have um, very plain solid rubber elastic we're quite uncomfortable these ones are covered in silk so basically just put them on, get them around and whatever you want to use it, just tighten it up and there we go, pop to one cup. So they're quite nice and easy and you can wear it either over the knee or under the knee, whichever way you prefer. Let's have one and in different ways, rebellious. Right. Goodness, my chair is falling apart. Boots next, and this time I have the button hook. So it's going to be seconds.
so a few possibilities. And let us start with a corset. That's not questionable. And you can wear a sports corset at the time, or a standard corset for tennis, doesn't need anything special, or a summer weight corset, and that's what this one is. Um, summer weight corsets were made with sort of mesh fabrics. This one is made in canvas and tulle with some cambric for the main elements and the channels. Let's have a look. There you go. So it is pretty see-through. It's a bit of an experiment. I've worn both these ones and uh, just cambric corsets and I think actually cambric corsets are a little bit more comfortable or more breathable. Um, so this is an experiment to see how the combination of these work. And there were something that, they had, that appears quite a lot in the advertisements at the time. They do have a waistband, the bones are still flossed, they have additional reinforcement over the, over the bust and because I didn't really quite trust the, the fabric at the back panel I've reinforced the eyelets as well. It's boned with um, a mixture of flat steel bones at the back and synthetic whalebone for all the rest and synthetic whalebone it's basically this stuff. So it's very flexible. This is, it basically has the same qualities as a proper whalebone, but obviously we're not using proper whalebone. So that's easy to cut. You can stitch through it. Um, with heat, it adapts to, to your body. So it was a pretty, well, it is a pretty good equivalent. Right. Put this pattern is based on a pattern from the Symington Museum. Sorry. Told you. <laughs> it supports you from here it still has quite a bit of space here to be honest it's not supposed to be squashing your organs or anything and I've got lots of space here for sitting or squatting so that's an important bit as well but apart from that you can breathe easily and hopefully you'll be okay to play tennis as well there you go bit of a close-up. So we have cambric with a busk and a brass hook. This is canvas with a tool. All of it is cotton so very light, very breathable. And back, and back here. Right, 
right, next layer. Um, for tenets, we can have different arrangements. We can have inbuilt bustles, separate bustles, we have petticoats, stuff. But let's keep it simple. So I'm just wearing a simple and light cotton and a petticoat. Just to preserve my modesty. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Let's have a look. And this is just in case I fall, had all the heels on it. Got to lawn. The back is just arranged with. cage goes next because obviously at that time you do have fashionable silhouettes to maintain and in that era again in the 80s a lot of dresses um, have inbuilt bustles in fact the dress I based this one on had one as well but because I've made this one for my next book and we've already covered um, interior bustles so I decided to go for my old favourite can buy these in my shop. Okay. If you missed the other videos, that's how you sit. Mm -hmm. Collapsible. And again, normally you would have a big petticoat to go over that. But I would have one. And because my dress, also typical of the era, has a foundation skirt that in my case is going to act as a petticoat. So dresses at that time had a foundation skirt on which the rest of the skirt was mounted. This is a kilt, kilted skirt and they could be either made in slight, well, in thicker fabric like wool, like a proper kilt, which would mean a yoke and a skirt, and then you don't need to have a foundation skirt at all. But because this is a very, very light fabric, almost see-through, a foundation skirt is needed, but um, the construction is slightly different. I made it slightly shorter, and usually you have the ruffle underneath to give it a bit more body. Well, I need to be able to move in it, so the ruffle is mounted a little bit higher to give a little bit more movement here. And the pleats are arranged and tied with a tape inside. It took quite some time to pleat it all. There's about seven meters of cotton pleated into that. And it's all hold on the yoke to be interesting putting that on and most skirts of that era have little inside bustles as well or called the bustle improvers though you can have them separate on two I suppose it's just to fill out those empty spaces here really not much more so let us dive in why is it dirty there's some insects on it It's going to be quite funny. Because I need to close. Okay, there you go, my little bus is on. Which means I can start 
closing the rest of the skirt. What a sign, eh? one it's the lightest bodice. A variety of bodices were used for playing tennis. Some of them were completely outside of the skirt with a belt on top. Some of them had been gathered to a waistband like um, round bodices or Spencer type bodices and some of them were just standard bodices. Um, this one has ruching element at the neck and at the waist and it closes with buttons and hooks and eyes that sort of gave a bit more mobility. Also, because you'll be playing tennis and because you will be sweaty, to be honest, most Victorian bodices had them, dress shields. There were bits of fabric prepared and loosely stitched into the armhole. And they are just cotton with a layer of, of what in usually very thin wool is the most absorbent one. And that's what I used here. And that's something to protect your bodice from the sweat. You don't really want unsightly sweat stains on the top of your bodice. No one wants that. So that's how Victorians dealt with it. You, the stitching is quite loose, so it's easy to take it off and wash and put it back again, or to put it on another gown. Um, the bodice is slightly boned with antique boning, but it's still very moldable. So hey, let's try it on. Nowadays you can still get dress shields and they are basically like panty liners that you can put in the armhole and it works. Mm. Right, more buttons, yay! Eh? Not tricky this time. Let's finish it off with a drapery. The shape is kept with the tapes and it's very light.
somewhere here, there is a pocket. I can find it. There you go. Ta da! Death pockets. This one is for Tanny's balls. Right. I need a hat. One will be enough. The banks are kind of cute. And blocks. And we are ready for a game, I think. So there you go, tennis outfit, very light, it's all cotton, so if it gets dirty, you can just wash it. Yes, there'll be a lot of pressing after that, and it is painful, but no harm done, it's easy to wash it all. And it's breathable, so it's not too hot, and you have a full range of movements, necessary. Let's take it outside. As you can see, you have quite a lot of movement to move both hands. Although, as I was as I was told last week, ladies did not use the overhand serve till the beginning of 20th century, but they could receive. I've never played tennis in my life, so <laughs> bear with me. The dress seems long, but obviously here the grass is quite long and my heels are digging inside but you can still, well, we'll see, we'll see if I can have a bit of a mock tennis. So. Ta-da! <laughs> Let's play! Video, yeah, go. One slow mo, but you 
and just for fun let's have a look at the range of movement we have in the summer corset no problem no problem let's do a push up oh my god take care <laughs> <laughs> Twenty more. No problem. Let's try some Indian ones. I'm just learning these from some of very good. Thank <laughs> you. 